In this video, we show you how to perform a flow simulation on the simple wing that we created in our previous video. We start by inserting an abstraction shape into the wing aero surface part. Since this is surface geometry, we don't have a part body to copy from the design model into the abstraction shape. Rather, we insert a derived representation into the abstraction shape. We only want to work with the abstraction shape, so we hide the design shape. The very first thing we will do is create a publication for the joint feature. This will be an immense help when defining our flow simulation. Next, we load the Fluid Scenario app. We need to again hide the irrelevant geometry. We will use the simulation assistant to help guide us through the process. We start by defining the name of our model and selecting the abstraction shape. Then, we define the physics behavior. We will use the default turbulence model. We define a steady state step with a maximum of 1000 iterations. Then, we click on the model tab and define the fluid domain. We will use our surface publication for our part. Next, we define the region of the fluid domain. Again, we use our publication. The little cube indicates the location of the fluid domain relative to the surface. Initially it was inside our wing, so we flip the direction. Now, we are ready to define the exterior limits of the fluid domain. We do this by defining a bounding box. Currently the academic license has a limit of 1 million nodes for flow simulation. So, we may have to compromise a bit on the size of our domain. We have to define the material properties for our fluid by defining a fluid section. For support, we need to select FEM feature from the drop down and then navigate to the region. Notice there is a fluid category for our materials. We select AIR as the material and click on OK. We are ready to define the boundary conditions for our fluid region. We start by defining a wall on the tops and sides of the domain. We allow slip on all these walls. Next, we define a fluid velocity of 44.7 meters per second at the front of the box. This is 100 miles per hour. We finish by defining an outlet pressure of zero on the back of the box. We are ready to create a mesh. However, before doing that, we need to briefly explain how to determine the proper mesh size. The Fluid Solver and 3D Experience uses a hybrid wall approach, and the recommendations for mesh size are based on the size of the boundary layer. 
A boundary layer develops when fluid flows over a surface and can be divided into an inner and an outer layer. In the inner layer, the velocity changes very rapidly. For a given flow, we can calculate the size of the inner and outer boundary layer using these equations. We then design our mesh, so the first element is at least twice as thick as the inner layer, and so there are at least 10 elements in the total boundary layer. Let's see how this works with our wing. We will investigate both the base and the tip of the wing, and at three points along the length of the profile. So, the edge is the limiting location. We would ideally like to use a mesh thickness of 0.5 mm. However, this would exceed the allowable node count, so we'll define a thickness of 1 mm. We can now define our mesh in 3D experience. We are going to use the hex dominant measure. I like to make sure I know what velocity I created my mesh for. We can use the element checking tool to make sure we have not exceeded the node limit. We update our model, change the name of the simulation, and then save it. Now we need to go back to our scenario. And change the velocity scale to the free stream velocity of 100 miles per hour. Flow simulations can produce a lot of data, so we want to adjust our output to cover only the most important information. We start by turning off output that is not relevant for our simulation. We want some specific output for the wing's surface. Again, having the publication really helps. After identifying the surface, we set the frequency so we only get output for the last increment. Then we select absolute pressure, under flow, and Y plus, and Y star, under turbulence. We define a history request for additional information. We set a frequency of 10. And then under flow. We select pressure force, viscous force, and total force. We can use this to calculate total drag and lift on our wing. We do a data check, to make sure we have made no errors. Flow simulations can produce large amounts of data. Be sure to store the results locally. You can use up to 8 cores. Since our computer only has 4 cores, that is what we select. When viewing the velocity vectors, we can use the whole domain. However, for looking at the pressure distribution on the wing, it will be very helpful to modify the display group. We can select region 1, to see the whole domain again. Next, we use the history data to plot the drag and lift forces on the wing.
Recall that we would have liked to use a mesh size of 0.5 mm, but this exceeded the 1 million node limit. We would really like to understand how much error might be associated with our drag and lift forces. So, we ran some models with different mesh sizes. Based upon this, we might expect an error of 5 to 10%.